It had a real um, tropical feel to it with the palm trees, the colour scheme. It felt like you were on holidays. We're told apartments are the solution to Australia's housing crisis. It felt nice to have my own place, felt independent, felt like I'd achieved something. So what happens when the companies we trust to look after these buildings are also looking after themselves? Just like taking the land to slaughter, we just kind of milk you dry. Why did you agree to talk to me today? Because I believe it's time that real change happens within this industry. When I was 14, I started working at Coles, helping mum a bit with the bills because stuff was hard back then. Mum, when she got in a better place, helped me as well to be able to get the apartment. I was really proud of him because, like Jacob said, I'm um, sorry if I'm getting a bit emotional. Um, um, Jacob has helped a lot from a young age as a single income parent. Jacob Lipton soon became unwell. COVID lockdowns left him out of work and he fell behind on his strata levies. His building was managed by NetStrata. From what I knew, it was about four and a half that f thousand that I knew owned. And then all of a sudden, it just numbers kept adding up. And then that's when I was like, Mum, what's going on? Within a few years, Jacob Lipton's debt had climbed to almost $20,000. Almost half that amount were fees for chasing his debt. When I heard that there was so much extra additional fees, I said, how is this fair? Netstrata charged fees to arrange a debt collector. That debt collector then charged thousands of dollars more all of which added to the total amount Jacob Lipton owed. But what he and his mother didn't know was that at the time, the debt collector also had a deal to channel fees back to Netstrata as a kickback. They're all making money from someone else's um, ill, you know, ill health, <laughs> basically, and uh, they're profiting from it. There is a desperate need for regulation to prevent that sort of consumer abuse. Strata solicitor and owner advocate Stephen Goddard says people like Jacob Lipton have little protection. The minute an owner falls into arrears, they enter into the cash cow merry-go-round, where the strata manager is paid for issuing notices, and if they have a connection to a, an agency, well, there are further kickbacks to the cash cow machine. Stephen Brell is the managing director of NetStrata and New South Wales president of the industry peak body, the Strata Community Association. You get kickbacks from a debt collector called Strategic Collection Services, or NetStrata does, doesn't it? Yeah, that's a commercial arrangement that we had in place. I mean, it's a bit of handy extra profit, isn't it? Because you already, already charge management fees and then you get a, a referral fee back from your contractors. Well, it all depends on the service. Again, we provide a range of services for our owners. So. But you agree you get a referral fee? Yes, we do. The company promises to disclose these kickbacks in AGM reports to owners. The ABC hasn't found a single one. And again, what you're pointing out there is a flaw in our process, which I will amend as soon as I get back to the office. How will you amend it? Well, we'll make sure that those referral fees are put in. This is just one of the deals Netstrata has with contractors to receive kickbacks, for which owners are ultimately footing the bill. There is no regulation preventing that kickback from occurring. There is nothing but blind trust in a world where trust is in short supply. Mr Brill admitted other flaws in the company's disclosures, this time concerning an offshore consultant called Prime Strata. Are there any further conflicts of interest you want to explain in respect of Prime Strata? Well, again, I certainly appreciate that one of our directors, his father-in-law, owns that company. Um, prior to this interview, I did review that and said we should be disclosing that as a personal relationship and not a commercial one. Why haven't you? Because it's something which just came to my attention in preparation for this interview. When Gary and Margaret Jackson moved into their apartment building near Botany Bay, they poured over Netstrata's financials. It was the insurance that stuck out, and I couldn't understand why it was so expensive. So much more. 
At a meeting with Netstrata in 2018, they questioned their $12,900 insurance bill. Margaret, with due diligence, rang their offices and asked for the invoice. So this is the key document, isn't it? What does this show us? Straight away, the first thing I saw was the brokerage charges. All this was itemised and my eyes went straight away to this bro brokerage, $4,000, and I could not believe it. While a typical brokerage fee is about 20% of the cost of the base premium, the Jacksons discovered that Netstrata's preferred broker charged their building 64%. So when I looked at that and I saw base premium 6,800, all the statutory levies charges, and this broker fee, I nearly fell over. Margaret and Gary contacted their strata manager, Nina Howell. She doesn't work at Netstrata anymore, Two years ago, she sued the company for unfair dismissal. They agreed a confidential settlement. I recall receiving an email from Gary and Margaret Jackson questioning the fee charged or the brokerage fee charged for their insurances. Nina Howell says even she didn't know how much was being charged. Yeah, I was just shocked, to be honest. Why? because it's just absurd. The figure that they were charging was way over and above the industry standard. This was no isolated case. The base premium was $9,000 from memory. Mike Ratchkovsky is another Sydney owner whose building is managed by Netstrata. And Strata Insurance Services charged 6000 $600, including GST, which is, you know, 60% roughly uh, commission or, or brokerage charged to our scheme directly. How did you feel about that? Outraged. What can you feel? These owners were shocked by the broker's exorbitant fees. But what really floored them was their discovery that the broker was owned by Netstrata itself. Looking at the percentage of the broker's fee, that was just, to me, it was unconscionable conduct. That's all I could keep thinking. That is unconscionable. How dare they? When the Jacksons complained, their brokerage fee was refunded in full. They knew the gig was up. They knew they were in trouble here. That's a clear acknowledgement of a conflict of interest. Mike Ratchkovsky, meanwhile, tried to confront his strata manager. He recorded audio of the meeting. Netstrata does disclose its ownership of Strata Insurance Services and says brokerage fees are retained by the subsidiary, not the agent. However, Netstrata's internal financial documents show these very same fees are pooled with the company's other income, last year generating almost $13 million worth of profit. The financial statements are signed off by Stephen Brell. You've already accepted that there are several problems with your Section 60 disclosure. Yep. This is another problem, isn't it? Because no, it, it, again, an, our, ordinary, our, our, an no, ordinary person it, reading that statement would believe that all brokerage fees are retained by the subsidiary, would they not? Well, again, our advice is that the Section 60 disclosure when it comes to our insurance broking is accurate. In one of the cases we've looked at, Netstrata's broker had charged owners 64% of the base premium. Is a 64% brokerage fee reasonable in any circumstances? It would depend on what the work that's been performed. In this particular case, Netstrata refunded the entire brokerage fee when the owners corporation flagged they intended to complain to authorities. Again, I'm not familiar with that particular case. But what does that say to you? Well, it means that we may have got our pricing wrong. I'm not quite sure. The only reason I can think of, Mr Brill, that the entire fee was refunded is because the company had no way to defend it. Again, I'm, I'm not, I can't comment because I'm not certain about what that particular case was. Netstrata also owns a fire safety company called Windfire. Windfire is wholly owned by Netstrata um, so the, once again, there's no arm's length transaction between the two companies and they can charge whatever they want and they do charge whatever they want. I think it's disgusting. 
At online meetings, Netstrata's staff have been offered incentives for steering work Windfire's way. First person to get 10, say for example, would get a $500 uh, gift voucher. Where is the government regulation? And where is the respect for the client? Does Netstrata offer incentives to its staff to hire Windfire to its buildings? No, not at all. What about a $500 gift voucher being given to staff if they move buildings over to the company? That was, that was a, an initiative that was started very early on. We ceased it immediately because I said, look, I don't believe that's a practice that we want to get into. Why not? Because of the concerns that you raised earlier. Again, what's the, the service concern, sorry? That we're engaging in unethical behaviour. Netstrata staff also receive as much as 50% of the management fees charged to their buildings. Some of the senior managers are on over 400,000, probably nudging 500,000. Stephen Brell, meanwhile, is on as much as $1.2 million a year. We pay our staff very well because we provide a premium service to our clients. I know today you've disclosed a few things here, which again, has made me feel really awkward. And I'm gonna go back and look at our practices and make sure that we tidy them up. However, we do provide a premium service and we do provide premiums for that. This month, Jacob Lipton and his mother put his apartment on the market. When we had to see um, the live ad on realestate.com, it, it really did get Jacob down. Feels like he's let himself down and, and me down. And if it wasn't for the extra cost um, someone is profiting from, Jacob would still, we would still be able to manage keeping the unit. Um, we just needed time. Clearly, they've been getting away with it, and if they haven't been brought to account, they're going to keep doing it. Stephen Brell insists his firm acts in an ethical manner. Look, every dealing that we do, every policy, procedure, product or service that we provide, we do so with our clients very much in mind. In the absence of government intervention, I'm of the view that the community should not have trust or faith in strata living as a lifestyle of choice. They are just going to be milked.